welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about acute flaccid paralysis in that flaccid that word you should remember acute is very important and paralysis so paralysis means uh, here we are discussing about neurological paralysis all the limbs are weak so limb weakness is very important okay all the limbs are weak and this flaccid flaccid means lower motor neuron type of weakness the muscle is flaccid then all the deep tendon reflexes are low or reduced so that is very important acute means within days or within hours patient become weak okay that is the one one of the classical example for acute flaccid weakness is hypokalemic periodic paralysis so potassium is uh, very low in that condition potassium actually shifts from the intravascular compartment so hypokalemia hypokalemia can produce very acute weakness so after a heavy carbohydrate diet patient develops acute weakness of the lower limbs or the upper limb that is very important in that element type of weakness flaccidity is there all deep tendon reflex are reduced but it is a type of muscle weakness but here we are discussing about guillain barre syndrome there is a neurological type of weakness acute flaccid paralysis that tells you that there is a sudden onset of flaccid weakness without features typical of an upper motor neuron disorder you can see in sometimes in acute stroke you can get umn type of weakness but most of the time in acute neuronal shock that resembles a uh, element type of weakness but it is uh, it's a part of umn type of weakness so that umn or brain is not involved here only peripheral nerves are involved there are many types of acute flaccid paralysis this is not acute flaccid weakness we are discussing in that acute flaccid myelitis comes that means uh, spinal cord is involved gbs is there there is guillain barre syndrome peripheral nerves are involved acute transverse myelitis uh, myelitis means inflammation of uh, spine toxic neuropathy electrolyte defects muscle disorder in that electrolyte disorder very important thing is hypokalemia and hypo uh, magnesemia and hypophosphatemia all these things acute flaccid myelitis or acute flaccid uh, weakness uh, which is produced by the spinal cord disorder defined as acute onset of flaccid weakness absent features suggesting an upper motor neuron disorder so umn type of disorder uh, all the findings are ruled out especially when you have a, a stroke or a tumor in the brain uh, it can patient can develop uh, acute weakness but mostly uh, that is unilateral but here in gb syndrome it is bilateral so it's a general umbrella under that there are different categories so that acute flaccid myelitis is a general term under that uh, different categories are there one is paralytic polio that is that's normally occurring in the uh, younger age group acute flaccid myelitis guillain barre syndrome acute transverse myelitis toxic neuropathy muscle disorders so that we are not discussing now we are only going to discuss guillain barre syndrome so we will not discuss that in detail now now if you can see here the chart for uh, acute flaccid myelitis there are different di- differential diagnosis like viral myelitis can be there various mi- viral myelitis can be there in that uh, gb syndrome comes somewhere here there are other differential diagnosis you can see here but uh, we will not be discussing all these things here we we'll just go to gbs so there are various differential diagnosis for this uh, gbs it can be periodic paralysis uh, botulism periodic paralysis hypokalemic periodic paralysis and uh, hyperkalemic periodic paralysis hypophosphatemia myasthenia tic paralysis transverse myelitis va- vasculitic neuropathies basilar artery thrombosis metabolic myelopathies myopathies poliomyelitis polymyositis all these things are differential diagnosis for gbs now when we discuss about gbs this basically gbs is uh, otherwise known as uh, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy 
GBS is coming under that actually. It is an acute, GBS is an acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. There are some differential diagnoses there also. But basically for an MBBS student, GBS is an acute inflammatory demyelinating neuropathy or AIDP. But there is something called as CIDP, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. If the progression arrest in 3 to 4 weeks, we call it as AIDP. If the progression prolongs more than 8 weeks, we tell it as CIDP. So that uh, days are very important. The progression dates are important, not the total duration of illness. So up to 3 to 4 weeks, that uh, weakness may uh, prolong, may progress in AIDP. But mostly what we when we follow up uh, GB syndrome, within one week patient's uh, weakness completes and patients start recovering from that or patient weakness will be static there. But whereas in CIDP, even after 8 weeks, patient may have continuous progressive weakness. Uh, you can see the progressive weakness means uh, the, uh, the severity of uh, weakness may increase even after 8 weeks. GB syndrome is an most common acute demyelinating neuropathy. Demyelinating means uh, you know that uh, there is a myelin sheet around the uh, nerve. So you just imagine there is a myelin sheet like this. Myelin sheet is uh, protecting the nerve and it helps in transmitting the electrical current. So if uh, these uh, myelin sheets are uh, 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 destroyed due to some reason, if they are destroyed, completely destroyed, then uh, there will not be any conduction or the conduction will come down. So that is demyelination and demyelination you can see here normal nerve myelin sheet is there. This is a nerve. This is a myelin uh, sheet and here myelin sheets are disrupted. So if you imagine the conduction which is occurring through this myelin sheet normally here it is interrupted. So uh, 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 the conduction of the electrical activity will be either slow down or completely disrupted. So it's an immune mediated uh, attack of the nerve myelin sheets. That means there are some antibodies formed against uh, uh, some bacteria or virus. These are antibodies. These are myelin sheets and myelin sheet it will go and attach and destroy the myelin sheet. Okay. It is an acute diffuse post infective disease involving spinal roots, peripheral nerves and occasionally cranial nerves. So it starts from the anterior horn cells, spinal roots and peripheral nerves. So nothing to do with the spinal cord. It, it is an element. If it is in the spinal cord, then it is UMN type of weakness. From the spinal cord, you get peripheral nerves. So these peripheral nerves are actually involved. Sometimes cranial nerves also involved. Mostly it is due to viral infection, cytomegalovirus, HIV, Epstein-Barr virus, chicken box virus. In that uh, most common infection that is uh, infective uh, GBS, it is Campylobacter jejuni. This patient can have diarrhea and all. So post-diarrheal weakness is the classical finding in most of the GBS cases. Other condition like lymphoma can produce GBS, systemic uh, uh, lupus erythematosus, sarcoidosis, post-vaccination. All these things can produce sometimes GBS, but nowadays the most common cause for GBS is some infection, viral or bacteria. In that bacteria, mostly Campylobacter jejuni. These patients can have some episodes of diarrhea. So the weakness typically starts after one or two weeks of the uh, illness, and it is progressive. So progressive weakness means it ascends up from the lower limb. It ascends up. Okay. So the weakness uh, starts in the lowermost part of the limbs and it slowly ascends up. Very rarely patient can have descending type of weakness from the cranial nerves will be involved first. Then uh, the spinal cord or uh, not spinal cord, uh, spinal roots or other peripheral nerves are involved. So proximal muscle starts uh, so uh, late. Uh, here you can see that the weakness is more in the proximal muscle. It starts in the distal muscles. It spread to the proximal muscles, but the weakness will be severe in proximal muscles. So starts from the distalmost part, but the weakness will be severe in the proximal groups. Sometimes cranial nerve can be involved, facial nerve can be involved, oculomotor nerve can be involved. So 
this can ascend to the brain stem and there it can produce cranial nerve involvement or from the cranial nerve it can descend down also okay there is a miller variant that we will see severe respiratory muscle weakness can occur so that patient will not will be having difficulty in breathing they may require ventilatory support no other findings deep tendon reflux are typically absent in most of the cases that's why we call it as acute flaccid weakness so muscle weakness is there flaccid limbs are there deep tendon reflux are typically absent paresthesia patient may complain but on examination you may not find any sensory impairment that is very important so sensory impairment are very very rare very uh, uh, some exception case exceptional cases are there there you can get sensory involvement but not a typical feature of gbs pain can be there because of nerve root irritation so many patients can have severe back pain so that is a part of gbs dysautonomia is very very classical because dysautonomia means in emergency room patient can have tachycardia bradycardia heart blocks hypertension hypotension tachybrady syndrome so many abnormalities you can see then other than that increased sweating all these things can be there sids can also be there uh, in many patients so hyponatremia is a part of uh, gbs so there is a diagnostic criteria you can see progressive weakness of two or more limbs uh, a reflexia deep tendon reflex are absent progression of the disease less than 4 weeks so that is a classical criteria and there are uh, uh, exclusion criteria supportive criteria Uh, doubtful uh, diagnostic criteria all these things are there so you have to see all these things one important finding i am telling here that is csf study albuminocytological dissociation so any uh, neurological case normally when there is an inflammation albumin in the csf will be elevated albumin will be elevated if the inflammation is due to an infection cells or cells also will be increased but here we know that it is not an infectious cause there is an this is a post infectious disease but it is due to the uh, antibodies produced about the against the spinal uh, cord or anti horn cells so cells are normal here if you do an lp cells are normal and albumin is increased so this is called as albuminocytological dissociation no suspected gbs you can have all these features and uh, sometimes it may progress uh, several days to four weeks and weak limbs can be there infection immune st- stimulation uh, all these things are there so we have already discussed that patient will have a previous may have a previous history of uh, some infection diarrhea after that patient is developing symmetrical weakness starts from the lower limb ascends up and uh, patient have deep tendon reflux is absent then if you do an lp albuminocytological disorder then you suspect gbs now this is a typical uh, picture which shows exactly what are things happen in uh, gbs we have seen all these things but two important things you should remember bladder is typically not involved here sensory system is not involved here but unfortunately some patients like prostatomegaly and all if they develop gbs some urinary disturbance can be there so already uh, there is a uh, prostatomegaly so if the abdominal muscles are weak because of gbs they will have some difficulty in urinating but it's not a part of gbs it is only a part of muscle weakness but bladder is typically not involved no sensory involvement are there but there are some variants of gbs sometimes sensations can be involved this autonomy is very very important especially in emergency room and uh, icu we uh, we face a lot of arrhythmias in this type of patients so we have to be very careful tachycardia bradycardia or hypotension hypertension if there is tachycardia and hypertension labetalol will be very good choice to control the dysautonomia now there are a lot of variants i am not going to the variants now you can refer this chart in that uh, there is a rare type of gbs that is sensory gbs so this is a very rare phenomenon that's why i told previously normally sensations are not involved in gbs but rarely this can occur occur other important type is miller fisher variant all should remember that normally gbs is a ascending type of weakness but here miller fisher variant 
facial nerve involved then the weakness descends down okay so both adults and children ophthalmoplegia ataxia or reflexia is the classical finding from there it can come down now adp uh, then acute motor axonal neuropathy acute uh, acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy amsan so there are va various variants for uh, this type of uh, gbs so you can see all these things so adp is the classical feature of uh, uh, gbs Mo motor sensory means uh, motor axonal neuropathy weakness without sensory symptoms or signs more common in children more common in northern china acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy there is a msan both weakness and sensory involvement can be there so rarely in gbs type of patients we are seeing uh, motor weakness with sensory then you have to think about msan miller fisher variant we have already seen it's a descending type of weakness ophthalmoplegia reflexia ataxia these are the classical finding so the cranial nerves can be involved first then it descends down so there is anti gq1b antibodies in the serum is a classical findings so cranial nerve involvement first then uh, facial weakness then descends down for pharyngeal weakness and descends down csf study classically albuminocytological disorder in 66% of the patient that is very important protein is elevated cells are normal that is very very important ncv or uh, nerve conduction study is very important uh, in that uh, demyelination with prolonged distal latency conduction velocity slowing evidence of conduction block and uh, temporal uh, dispersion of uh, compound action potential are the usual finding so conduction is uh, defective here conduction is a, either completely interrupted or slow here so in primary axonal pathology the principal electro diagnostic finding is reduced amplitude of the compound action potential without conduction slowing and prolongation of the distal latency so demyelination it is different Uh, axonal variety it is different axonal variety uh, uh, amplitude of uh, conduction is reduced whereas uh, demyelination the conduction itself is uh, slowed down slowed down or disrupted so the demyelination patients will have more severe problems in most of the patients so acute management in emergency room you, we have to give iv immunoglobulin 400 mg per kg per day for 5 days total dose of 2 g per kg body weight given over 5 days or 0.4 g per kg per day or we can go for plasma pheresis we should remember that in plasma we have antibodies against uh, this nerves antibodies against nerve this is an antibody this is antibody this, this may go to the nerve and atta attack it so if plasma pheresis means we take out the plasma and uh, filter the plasma through some membrane and give back to the patient so this antibodies are blocked here so they cannot go back or you infuse a new plasma to the patient so plasma exchange okay both are possible plasma filtration or plasma exchange so in that we are removing the antibody so that patient uh, will not have any problem or patient clinical features will significantly improve previously we used to give corticosteroids but nowadays we know that corticosteroids have very limited role or no role in gbs management so iv ig or plasma pheresis these are the two important things so uh, if the patient uh, improves and again if the patient uh, develops some more problem or worsening of symptoms you can go for second dose of iv ig or plasma pheresis now respiratory failure many patients who is having diaphragmatic paralysis they may require uh, mechanical ventilation if the patient goes to mechanical ventilation some patients recover very fast because they respond very well to iv ig or plasma pheresis some patients if it is suppose uh, if it is cidp cidp it is very difficult to diagnose early only if the patient does not improve or a patient deteriorates in his neurological weakness then only we can make a diagnosis of cidp in that type of patients uh, tracheostomy may be required long term mechanical ventilation we have to always uh, go for tracheostomy recovery most of these uh, patients uh, recover mortality is only 3 to 7% 
if uh, treated properly this patient uh, without any uh, residual weakness most of the patients will recover now treatment of aidp airway um, uh, mechanical ventilation is required in diaphragmatic paralysis ivig can be given drugs for autonomic dysfunction hypertension and tachycardia labetalol is a treatment of choice plasma exchange or plasma resis is the treatment in acute conditions so we have discussed about one of the important neurological disorder which can be managed in emergency room that is gbs so gbs is a element type of weakness ascending type of weakness reflexes are absent miller fisher variant you can uh, see sometimes that starts from the brain stem that means uh, cranial nerves are involved then the weakness descends down so there are different types of presentation motor weakness can be there motor and sensory weakness can be there pure uh, uh, dysautonomia can be there pure sensory can be there but the classical feature of gbs is always uh, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy that's a motor type of weakness uh, peripheral nerves are involved it's an element type of weakness mostly we can treat these patients with uh, plasma paresis or ivig thank you